This is the AM transmitter made by Talking House. I've made a few modifications in this particular one to make it sound better for music broadcast. Uh, it's got a few deficiencies, mostly in the modulation, how it's modulated and how much it'll do, and the sound fidelity. This is mostly meant for voice grade operation. I'm going to show what I did to upgrade it to full fidelity, and first we'll see the before and then the after. What I've done to it, and this is one of them anyway, I'll explain that later. This is actually what I did to the modification afterwards for tuning the antenna and making it sure it's tuned right. That was one of the deficiencies I found in this unit. The auto-tune doesn't always tune at its best peak performance, so I added this control to actually peak the signal. But we'll look at the before results performance of this transmitter and then the after. And I'm also going to explain a little bit about what AM or amplitude modulation should look like when it's operating properly. This is going to display the output of the transmitter and how it performs. What AM is supposed to look like, this is one example. This is what we want our envelope, what we call the RF envelope. It's supposed to look nice and smooth like that audio signal waveform that we put in it to make it do this. The idea is to make this look undistorted and we're going to test that. We'll be looking at our audio waveform. That's our amp their carrier wave and that's what it looks like when it's modulated. It should look clean with no squaring or anything. It's done tuning going to be comparing the audio signal on this line and looking at the RF envelope here. Here it is. So 40 hertz is barely perceivable there. It's not even locking. As it goes up in frequency, well, you see it starts to become more apparent. Start to see the uh, frequency increasing. Uh, now it locks. So now we're getting up higher in frequency and around 1k we change the time base and up oh, it's squaring off as you can see so we don't have a very linear response to this and it gets squared off as it gets up toward 10 kilohertz so this is, doesn't look too good no right We'll do the sweep now, starting at 1 kilohertz. There's the audio waveform, and there's the RF output. That's 100% modulation. Here comes the sweep. There's 40%, or 40 uh, hertz, going up to 50. So far, so good. It's uniform. perfect. Here's the first modification right there. See that's a chip. That is, and this is the these are the parts okay. And I built all this on a heat sink about that size. See where it's going to fit in there. And uh, I'll show you the schematic in a minute but anyway had to build this first to get it ready for the modification. Also, this power supply, it's got the same connector as the old one. Here's the power supply I got. This one is 24 volts at 1 amp. That's perfect for this modification. I got this one for $10 at a surplus store. 
LM759CP. Uh, this is the chip, but this is the modulator chip. 281. There's others on eBay. And this is the schematic. You have a power wire, an in and an out. Of course, the tab is connected to ground. There's a the components you'll need. 100 ohm resistor, 6.8K, a 50 ohm, 4 watt, actually you can make it 5 watt, and a 1N914 diode. This and the power supply. You get the modulator made up first. Once the modulator has been made, here's the other things that need to be done. The capacitor C301 and TR308. Find those and then snip them out of the circuit. The modulator has been made. You want these kind of cables on it. You need a shielded cable and just a regular piece of wire. Ground one end of the shielded cable. And that end, the other end, uh, as you can see, the input end goes to that end of the R304. And the out, you take that wire and put it to, uh, solder it to this end of R358. The power uh, will go to LK1 link, and it's, that is located right next to C328, the power supply capacitor. Also, you want a 10 ohm resistor. These are quarter, uh, half watt values. That'll also connect to LK1, and then the other side you'll have a wire, and that'll go all the way over to diode 308. And there's this modification. See, two 1,000 ohm resistors, or 1K, solder each one end of those resistors to R231, R232, and you take the other end of the resistors, join them together, and have a wire that goes to 30 microfarad, 25 volt on the negative end, okay? See there? You got uh, the positive end goes to this end of R301. And then we add a 68K, a 68K resistor that's soldered across R302. Here's the LK1 jumper modification. Put one wire on it here, this one. That'll be going to the feed the modulator, which is right there. There's the 10, 10 ohm resistor right there. There's that wire attached to that. That wire comes all the way around here. Okay, goes all the way over here. That's how I dressed it. To cathode side of D307. There's R231 and 232. That's oh, these two resistors. And here's the 1K resistors. And those are tacked right across. Those are tack soldered. See right there? There's two resistors tied together there. That wire comes over here and connects to that capacitor right there. See? That's a 30 microfarad. That side, the positive side, connects to R301. Here's a 68K and right behind this other wire here, it connects right across R302. Here's R358. It's a 10 ohm, and here's R304, and that is a R304. It's a 10K. Okay, so here's the shielded cable. See that gray one there? That's what I put, and I tacked it, soldered it right on the side of it, and on that side of R304. That goes to the modulator, and the one coming back from the modulator is this red wire. That goes to the side of the, the left side of the 10 ohm resistor right there and just tack solder it on there. R358. And of course these wires again go all the way back over here to the modulator. Here's plug PL202 that can be disconnected and that can be left unplugged and this plug just set aside inside the chassis or something. There's TR304. It's been snipped out. I just cut it out. That is the original modulator transistor. And that is the other capacitor I clipped out, C301, right next to that modification. But you can see, yeah, you can see it there. C301. That's the old capacitor. That's 0 0.01. That was cut out. And this modification was added. All the modifications are done with this except one thing. We want to put an antenna tuning control on this because the Antenna tuner in this 
transmitter doesn't always tune for peak. Notice I got a meter here. I use that one to peak the antenna. I do it with tone. I do it, use a one kilocycle tone. I got it built into this transmitter. It's reading at five. That's a dead carrier. Now, when I add modulation to one kilohertz tone, it goes up twice as much. Now, as I tune the control here, you'll notice it peaks. There it goes. See? What I put on just to peak the antenna because the one inside here doesn't always do a good job. This meter is a zero to one milliamp movement. 50k or 50,000 ohm trim pot in series with the meter. And here's the plug using a tip and sleeve which goes in the jack I put in the back of the transmitter. Okay, so there's one way. This is a uh, breakout box. Same thing here. It's a 3.5 millimeter that also will plug in the back of the transmitter. Okay, pin jacks. I plug the meter probes into and that just connects to the plug. As you can see, and I can peak it the same way. Watch. Tune it. It tunes for peak. Now there's a circuit in the in, inside this transmitter to uh, connect a meter to. For the meter circuit, there's R308. That's this resistor here. It's a 2.7K resistor. We solder wire there right on this side of R308, 2.7K. This wire goes to the, through a 1K resistor. Here's the circuit. You notice here's the 1K. Here's IC301, here's R308, and the 2.7K resistor. The end of R308 connects to pin 1, so whether you tie it onto the resistor or pin 1 of uh, IC301, same thing. Over here is the circuit for the RF meter 50K trim pot, 3.5 millimeter plug and jack, the 0 to 1 milliamp movement. Here's how I constructed the antenna tuner. It's a tuning capacitor. This is a 15 picofarad capacitor. I've got a short wire jumper from here to there, the antenna connection, and it needs a ground, so I ran a ground wire to there. Put it in a small wooden box like this and put foil in it. It could be in a metal box too. Tuning this transmitter with a 1000 hertz tone, I have one built into this, but you can also get an app for one here. This nice 1000 hertz. Hello. It's a tone generator. This one says 440, but it's a, just a tone generator. So I can open that. And there it is. I have one kilohertz already set up. Push play. And I'm going to turn the tablet up. And you'll see the meter increase. Tune it with the 1K tone. There it is. That peaks it for best performance. It's a nice, simple tone oscillator. And it works really good for... Uh, one kilohertz tone to tune it up. Right, so here's another uh, I learned about this unit because it doesn't always tune right. If you should shut the unit off and then turn it back on on the same frequency, the uh, tuner will try to readjust itself when it really doesn't have to and it doesn't quite hit the tuning right on where it should. So I got a workaround. So back here in this modification I made there's the wire that goes to the antenna. Well, I'll touch that during the tune-up. Just put my finger on it for like five seconds until the uh, tuner inside this thing starts moving. And I'll show you why in just a second. So right now, I'm going to turn the power off and then wait for a second. I'm going to re-zero the uh, knob and I'll turn it back on and then I'll place my finger on the back where I said. That temporarily detunes it. And there it goes. Now I move my hand. And that fools the tuner into starting from beginning. Again, I'm tuning this part of it with no tone. And as soon as it gets finished tuning, it should be around 5 or something. Uh, it's getting there, as you can see. Uh, I will tune it with a tone because that's the best way to tune it. All right, you can see it's, again, see, it didn't hit to the 5 mark where I have this meter set. So now I turn on the tone and I set it for 
The modulation light just turns red. All right. Now this thing should swing to 10 when I tune it. Yeah, see what it missed? Yeah, that's good. Now I shut the tone off, and it rests right at halfway where I set the meter up. Notice how far I had to tune it from 12 o'clock to about 2. Anyway, so that's one of the tricks for using the indoor antenna. The outdoor antenna is a different story. So, But using the indoor antenna, this is a way to do it. audio processing for AM to make it sound good like other stations so in this case I use this AM processor the Optimod 9100B very good AM processor here's the uh, diagram I used for the the audio path I took so there's the audio source and I ran it into the Optimod here and I recorded it on audio recorder and then on the playback I had an audio player like my computer and then I run that right into the talking house transmitter set it for hundred percent and then we can get a good idea of what this transmitter sounds like with professional processing There you have it. Modification complete. Works great.